Democrats once claimed to be the big tent party, accepting varying ideas and different views. It appears, however, there's no room in the tent for at least one voice, pro-life Democrats. In the early 90s, more than 100 held office on the Hill. Today, there are six. While they may not have much of a voice inside of these halls, pro-life Democrats exist. And leaders in the movement say it's time for their voice to be heard. All 21 million of them. So when you look at the polls, a lot of times the polls will say, do you support Roe v. Wade? And then they'll call whatever number that is the number of Democrats who support abortion or who consider themselves pro-choice. But when you look at the details um, further, you know, about a third of Democrats um, oppose abortion. As executive director of Democrats for Life of America, Kristen Day hears from a lot of voters who feel ignored by the party. There are so many people out there. I hear it all the time. I was doing an interview on the radio and some callers called in and I think three in a row said uh, we would vote Democrat again if they would change their position on abortion. Pro-life activist and former Congresswoman Marilyn Musgrave sees a shift on the horizon, especially with key voting groups. The Democratic Party is out of a touch with Hispanic voters who think in, in a, a majority that abortion should be banned uh, for any and all reasons. This information combined with the desire to win elections led some party leaders to act. In July, Democratic Congressional Campaign Chairman Ben Ray Lujan tried to reopen the tent to pro-lifers by telling the Hill newspaper, there is not a litmus test for Democratic candidates. As we look at candidates across the country, you need to make sure you have the candidates that fit the district that can win in these districts across America. Although House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and others indicate they're open to the idea, pro-choice advocates moved quickly to close the door. NARAL Pro-Choice America President Elise Hoag tweeted, ignoring women's fundamental freedoms and equality to win elections? is both an ethically and politically bankrupt strategy. Musgrave says influence from the extreme left worries some party leaders. Their extremism is very damaging to the party. That's why you're hearing uh, members of leadership say there shouldn't really be a litmus test. President Obama's former faith director, Michael Ware, says supporting pro-life candidates just makes sense. The Reclaiming Hope author points out Indiana Senator Joe Donnelly, a pro-life Democrat in a red state. He says someone with that stance will gel with likely voters and makes more sense than a far-left candidate who will ultimately lose. It's only in D.C. where that argument makes sense. Not, e not even their own constituents believe that women would be better off, the country would be better off if we had uh, so-called pure candidates on issue, which for them means supporting federal funding for abortion, supporting no restrictions on abortion, et cetera, et cetera, that we had candidates running and losing on that platform. Even still, Ware remains hopeful about the future of the party. The, the fight is real. And you know, one of the unfortunate things about the Democratic Party is that um, it seems to take us losing to revisit what should be settled questions. Musgrave says she's cautiously optimistic. When I was in Congress, uh, there were pro-life Democrats that were elected, and that was actually the strategy of Rahm Emanuel, who headed up the campaign committee at that time. But after they were elected, their majority chose Nancy Pelosi as speaker, and then she just advanced her pro-abortion agenda. It's an uphill battle. Day says she's been fighting for the last 15 years. So why not join the other side? For some Democrats, the ideal party means moving from pro-life to whole life. That means caring for the life of the mother and the baby from the womb to the tomb. Day and other whole life Democrats say truly helping women is accomplished through government-supported paid maternity leave, anti-poverty programs, perinatal hospice care, and women's support clinics. So the fight to help women and win elections could play out in a unique way next year, pitting Democrat versus Democrat when it comes to the important issue of life. Amber Strong, CBN News, Washington.